logistics featured heavily in our discussions yesterday, both with refer reference to LATAM's infrastructure gap, which is a constraint to trade and to growth, but also about the huge potential for investment and a deepening of the trade and investment relationship between the Arabian Gulf and Latin America and the Caribbean. And that brings us to today's program, which is focused entirely on identifying opportunities for trade and investment and by taking a deep dive into sectors, so including logistics and infrastructure, but also looking at sectors like energy, business, and finance. And to set, this, to set the scene in our first session today, we're going to be looking at new research commissioned speci specifically for GBF by the, ID, by the IDB to identify and exploit existing trade and investment gaps. So we'll be looking more at the conclusions of that excellent report after this short video to start the day. I'd like to um, invite the speakers for our first session to join me up on stage now. So our first session is called Finding the Gap, Realizing New Trade and Investment Potential. And a real focus of this session is going to be on that research that was commissioned uh, by the IDB. And you will all have received an email last night telling you a little bit about day one. But what you'll also have received is a link to that research and I would recommend that you all open that link and read the report because it really is excellent. Um, it talks not just about sort of new sectors for investment, but it also pr provides the real sort of actionable uh, uh, policy uh, framework for going forward and developing those relationships. So I'd highly recommend that you read it. But we have with us today um, Fabrizio Aperti, the manager of the integration and trade section at the IDB, who is responsible for that report. And he's going to be telling us a little bit more about that report uh, shortly. We also have with us um, some speakers who can provide a little bit of s some country specific information on how we can sort of augment that trade and investment relationship. So we have with us the Minister for Foreign Affairs for the Dominican Republic, Miguel Vargas Maldonado. And also we have with us Junco Rojas, the former Undersecretary for International Trade in Argentina, who is currently a member of the Global Future Council on International Trade and Investment at the World Economic Forum. So th thank you to all the speakers for being here. I, just before we start, I wanted to let you know that the minister will be speaking in Spanish. So as, as ever, a simultaneous translation um, into Spanish and English will be available for everyone uh, if that is necessary. Um, so Fabrizio, I'd like, to, I'd like to start with you. So first of all, really just, just tell us a little bit about this report. It really is excellent because it has a, sort of those, those actionable uh, policy plans. But bef before we talk about that, tell us a little bit about uh, where the gaps are. Where sure. are those gaps? Thank you, Fiona. And good morning to everyone. I'd like to, again, thank the Dubai Chamber of Commerce and the government of Panama for partnering with IDB to put this, this event together, it's very important for us. I'd also like to thank my, my team, uh, Rafa, Pancho, Itzel, Jose, you know, for very, a lot of sleepless nights to put this together. Thank you guys, you're great. And um, regarding the report, um, the main findings of the report are that um, three main messages for you to take, to take home. Trade is very low, uh, trade is very concentrated, and trade is complementary between our regions. Trade is bilateral trade between GCC and Latin America and the Caribbean is extremely low, only $16 billion. We export 11 uh, from the region, you import five. Um, so this is very limited. This is half percent of our total exports to the world, 0 0.43. So it's, 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 it's very low. That means there's a lot of potential. So we look at the glass half full, of course. Uh, that means there's a lot of space to grow. Trade is very concentrated. 
uh, Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, just three countries make up 76% of the bilateral trade. And the UAE is responsible for almost 50% of the exports from GCC to our, our region. So that means um, the, the, the trade is, is, is extremely e concentrated. And, and, and yet, it is very complementary. And that's a, a, a very important message to share. Um, we export what the GCC countries import. Uh, you export what we import among the, the f uh, top 10 uh, exports from Latin America and the Caribbean are five top imports from GCC. Yet, that trade is not happening. And um, we, need, we need to do something about it. The report uh, furbishes, elaborates some recommendations, and I can get that into that a little later, so I leave the panelists there um, to respond. There are trade costs that we have to overcome. The governments, the trade promotion organizations that are here present are extremely important actors, are protagonists of, of this trade, and I'd like to share some thoughts on that, but maybe Fantastic. give it to Yeah, we will get into that, I promise. Yeah. Uh, but first, I want to bring the minister into the discussion. Ministro, ¿podría contarnos un poco sobre la relación entre República Dominicana y Dubai y cómo ha cambiado en los últimos cinco años? Sí, muchas gracias. Eh, primero, quiero agradecer a la Cámara de Comercio de Dubái por esta importante invitación de participación en este foro internacional de negocios. También agradecer al gobierno de Panamá por su gran acogida y su acostumbrada hospitalidad y reconocer y felicitar también al Banco Interamericano de Desarrollo por su participación y apoyo a este foro internacional. Ciertamente, la política exterior de la República Dominicana se cimenta fundamentalmente en el respeto mutuo y en el mantenimiento del diálogo para tratar de alcanzar y lograr la consolidación de integración regional y global. Por eso, y eso se expresaba en el día de ayer, la presencia diplomática es fundamental para consolidar estas relaciones bilaterales comerciales y relaciones de inversión. La República Dominicana, desde el 2008, tiene apertura de nuestra embajada en los Emiratos Árabes Unidos, con sede en, en Abu Dhabi, y también tiene una gran misión diplomática activa, permanente, que toca todos los aspectos políticos, comerciales y de inversión. Eh, hemos participado en diferentes foros eh, con Dubái, estuvimos en octubre eh, del año pasado en el foro de cooperación Dubái-Caribe, y eh, ahí tuvimos la oportunidad de plantear estos temas. Planteamos también la necesidad que se hace necesario ya la apertura de una embajada de los Emiratos Árabes en la República Dominicana, que esto va a consolidar nuestra posición, va a contribuir con ese proceso de fortalecimiento de nuestras relaciones comerciales y de inversión. Y en el encuentro de, del foro también tuvimos la oportunidad de realizar varias reuniones bilaterales con diferentes ministros, entre ellos el ministro de Relaciones Exteriores, con el cual pudimos firmar cuatro acuerdos importantes. Uno de cooperación en cultura, otro de cooperación en nuestras eh, 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 instalaciones de nuestras escuelas diplomáticas, otro también de consulta política y uno que fue el más importante en la promoción en, de, del comercio y la inversión bilateral entre la República Dominicana y Dubái. Sin lugar a duda, este foro constituye un escenario importante y apropiado para que la República Dominicana pueda presentar todas las oportunidades que tiene de inversión a capitales árabes eh, en este momento, sobre todo tomando en cuenta también lo que ha sido el desempeño económico del país, eh, la estabilidad política, la democracia que funciona y otros aspectos que crean confianza y estabilidad en sentido general. Perfecto, muchas gracias. Um, Shunko, I would just like to get your perspective. I know that you have a, an important perspective about what Argentina has done, but before that, maybe you could tell us a little bit. I know you have a lot of insights into the challenges in developing the relationship, and I think that that would provide extremely useful context for the rest of the discussion today. Could you tell us a little bit about your views there? Sure, yeah. Thank you, Fiona. Um, as Fabrizio said, there are many opportunities and complementarities between the two regions, but when you look at the actual trade between the two regions, it's very low. And, and I think that there are many market failures that can explain for that. 
something that is important for Latin American companies is that doing business with the Emirates or the Gulf is not business as usual. If you want to enter that market, you have to go the extra mile and uh, invest in order to get that market. Uh, the Emirates market uh, is a very highly sophisticated market, very open market, high competition. Uh, and that means that it's a demand driven, a buyer driven value chain, demand driven business. So customers, exporters, Latin American companies need to invest in that and adapt their products and be very aware of the costs yeah. and the quality of the product and services. If they do not perform, there is a long, long queue of competitors from China, from India, from Pakistan, from Europe, from Ethiopia, which are willing to take that position. So Latin American companies need to be very aware of that. Second, there are important uh, cultural differences, uh, language barriers. Mm -hmm. Le let's say, for example, terms such as Ramadan, such as Halal. These are very important things in the uh, Arabian culture, which are not familiar for um, uh, average SME in Latin America. And they need to understand this, and they need to adapt their products and business practices in order to um, uh, satisfy the demand in the Emirates. Third, geographical different, uh, distances. This means uh, higher transit times, higher costs. SMEs need to work together, take advantage of agglomeration efficiencies uh, and in order to increase volume and reduce costs in order to overcome this type of uh, challenges. Fourth, there are many logistics infrastructure deficiencies in Latin America. Yeah. We need to invest, given th this is like a chicken and egg situation. There is yeah. low volume, trade volume, then there is lack of uh, good, good infrastructure. Uh, we need to invest in infrastructure, and here is something where the IDB can play a very important role, supporting the, the infrastructure for the value chains in order to have a stronger uh, basis for um, trade volume with the Emirates. Third, last but not least, uh, I think it's very important what the, United, what the UAE is doing in order to diversifying the trading relationships, focusing on Latin America. The fact that the Dubai Chamber is opening up offices throughout the region is very, very important. This is going to stimulate trade and the in this is going to spark the interest of exporters to go and explore the Emirates uh, market. We have the companies need to be aware that the, the global context today is not the best one. We are going through a, a recession, not a recession, but a slowdown in economic yeah. growth. Global trade is going slower than production and, and growth. However, there are ve very important opportunities. First of all, each business must be assessed in its own merit. Second, next year you have Expo 2020 Dubai. This is going to be a huge pole of attraction for business. And I think that Latin American companies need to take advantage of that in order to enter the new market. Great. Thank you very much for those insights. So what I mean, you've given some recommendations there, but what are the uh, IDB's recommendations? Sure. What's the solution? So let's recap. Huh? Trade is low. Trade is concentrated. Trade is complementary. Um, and there are three main costs, three main barriers. Those are regulatory, logistics and information. So the government and the private sector should work together to overcome in the regulatory side. Um, Regulatory obstacles can make up uh, up to 10% of the value of the trade. There's not one preferential trade agreement between the GCC and Latin America and the Caribbean. We have to get our trade negotiators to sit down to have tea, coffee, pistachos, and, <laughs> and negotiate trade agreements. We have to open our markets. Please, we need a preferential trade agreements. Our research shows that if preferential trade agreements are signed, trade will increase 60%, almost $10 billion. So we should do that. There's only three bilateral investment treaties that are in place. There's a handful of double taxation agreements. We need to open up our economies. We need to negotiate more on the regulatory side. Logistics, you know, the old saying goes, it's the economy stupid. It's logistics stupid. <laughs> it's almost 20% of the cost, uh, Shunko was saying it. Yeah. Those are the main barriers. So we need to work in, in you know, that's our, an agenda for our region. The IDB is working on trade facilitation, electronic single windows. We need to do more on that. We have companies from Dubai, like Dubai Ports, which are already transferring innovation 
and know-how to our region. So that is something we can do together because m much of the trade also will come from investment from the GCC countries in our region in order to export. So we need to overcome those, those barriers together. And last, but perhaps most important, information. We need to know each other, people to people exchanges, company to company exchanges, e events like this one, having the GBF in Latin America. I thank the Dubai Chamber again. I see the colleagues are here. You know, we need to m do more of this. GBF and Fiona, we thank you for, you know, your role in this. Um, I promotion and diplomacy and trade offices. We also research that the opening of embassies um, contributes to an increase of 20% in our trade. My team was working sleepless nights, phoning and do serving the diplomatic offices in, 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 in of Latin America in, in Dubai and GCC and getting data and we're gathering data. People like Alvaro, who I think is around there, a Peruvian diplomat, very dynamic, very astute, was telling us the other night that when they opened the commercial office, there was only a few million dollars of trade between Peru and GCC. Now now it's hundreds of millions. Chile, which opened a commercial office, then an embassy. In, 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 a couple of years ago, the uh, uh, foreign direct investment of Chilean companies in GCC was uh, $1.5 billion. So that, um, the information, the contacts, the diplomacy is absolutely key, the commercial diplomacy. Uh, the IDB supporting that effort, and I want to recognize the presence here of the trade promotion organizations from 19 countries which are present. Um, we have researched that one dollar invested in trade promotion generates from 38 to 43 dollars in exports. So fiscally, it's very sound to invest in promotion. There's a high return on investment. From the IDB side, we have created an online community uh, called connectamericas.com for companies to interact and know each other and trade more. And we created just before this event um, a, a, a GCC, um, Arabian Gulf, Latin America, and the Caribbean online community between, uh, within connectamericas.com, which we invite you to join. There's already more than 600 entrepreneurs interacting there. We need more, uh, uh, we need more of that. Lower down information costs, lower down regulatory costs, lower down logistics costs, and trade will boom. Fantastic. That is all great advice. And I think, Shunko, you've got some more great advice. Tell us a little bit about Argentina's strategy for diversification and, and the increase in trade and what the Macri administration's been doing since, since it took office. Thank you, Fiona. Um, so Argentina departed from a very, very low point. Argentina was close to the rest of the world for several years. So when we uh, took up, we had a, a long homework to do. Um, and I think I'm, I'm glad that we did a lot many of the things that Fabrizio was mentioning That's about right. the <laughs> best practices. So let me tell you a little bit about it. First of all, there was a very strong political commitment at the highest level. President Macri, Vice President Michetti took very seriously the relationship with the United, with the UAE, and 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 visited the country several times and made important decisions. And this is very important to show political willingness, but also to uh, facilitate the execution of the decisions that are made. Throughout the chain, there are many, many obstacles, problems, things that need to be overcome when you have the support of the president, that's critical. Yes. Second, we were very aggressive in terms of building the legal and institutional framework for um, consolidating the bilateral relationship. Uh, governments come and go, uh, economic circumstances may change, if you have a double taxation treaty, bilateral investment treaty, these are the institutional frameworks that will provide security, stability, and incentives necessary for the investors to do business, the, the traders, the investors to do business between the two countries. Third one, uh, to facilitate business, we eliminated visas. The UAE has the most powerful, strongest passport in the world. It's nonsense to require visas to the UAE, so we eliminated visas. This is a recommendation for all Latin American countries. Uh, second, we set up a diplomatic commercial attaché in Dubai. We had an embassy in Abu Dhabi, but it was very important to have physical presence in Dubai. As the report says, if you have local presence, you can increase up to 20% your trade volume uh, in, this, in this place. Third, we work very closely with the private sector, building public-private partnerships. 
Uh, and in that regard, we work with the Argentine MIT Chamber of Commerce, with, with DP World, with Jebelali uh, free, free Zone Area, to create an Argentine warehouse in order to facilitate uh, for SMEs to have their stocks there and be ready to supply the market whenever there is a demand there, being very fast and efficient in order to, to respond quickly to the demand in the, in the Dubai market. And third, we also set up a special credit line and guarantees for companies willing to enter the Emirate market, so supporting logistics in Dubai, providing financing, strong political support, and the legal and institutional infrastructure to give sustainability and certainty throughout the period. Fantastic. I think that, uh, that really sets the stage for success, um, wh what, I I'm, what so. I'm hearing here. Uh, nos queda muy poco tiempo, pero quiero darle la última palabra al ministro. Y quiero saber cuál, cuál es la estrategia mirando hacia el futuro y cuáles son las oportunidades para diversificación en la relación entre los dos uh, regiones, dos países. En, en el área de comercio, evidentemente que se hace necesario <coughs> seguir cambiando la estructura exportadora, eh, elevar el volumen de exportación de productos manufacturados con un alto valor agregado y que tiene un componente eh, ten, de tecnología muy importante con circuitos electrónicos, con equipos médicos, con equipos farmacéuticos y otros que evidentemente han ido eh, variando esa estructura de exportación eh, que solamente en principio era, eh, se concentraba en alimentos, siendo nosotros también una garantía de la seguridad alimentaria de los Emiratos Árabes. Pero también en el aspecto de, y lo decía Fabricio, es importante implementar acuerdos de cooperación bilateral, es importante implementar acuerdos de alcance parcial de comercio con flexibilidades de comercio preferenciales eh, que si no tienen que ser eh, de libre comercio en su, en su mayoría que se adapten a la complementariedad. Y en segundo lugar, en materia de, de, de inversión, la República Dominicana ofrece grandes oportunidades de inversión en energía renovable, en, en, en turismo, en industria, en zona franca, en, en infraestructuras. De hecho, eh, la, el desempeño económico del país, que eh, creció más de un 6% promedio en los últimos seis años, el año pasado tuvo un crecimiento de un 7%, cuando en la región el promedio fue de 1.5%, con unos niveles muy bajos de inflación, debajo del 3%. Elevamos nuestro Producto Interno Bruto a más de 82 mil millones de dólares, eh, siendo, convirtiéndonos en la sexta economía de, la, de Latinoamérica. Todos estos son atractivos, junto a una seguridad jurídica, junto a una estabilidad económica, junto a una de democracia que funciona, son elementos atractivos para la inversión. De hecho, hay un ejemplo ya en nuestro país con DP World, que se instaló en el 2003, con una inversión mixta, privada, eh, de inversionista dominicano e inversionista emiratí, y que ha funcionado perfectamente. El puerto multimodal Caucedo es referencia en la región. Nosotros tenemos el principal hot del Caribe, tenemos una gran conectividad y somos un hot importante también de la región. Tenemos ocho aeropuertos internacionales, doce puertos de carga, tres puertos de crucero y una infraestructura, una infraestructura vial importante que cubre todo el territorio nacional. O sea, yo creo que son elementos fundamentales para poder profundizar nuestras eh, relaciones comerciales de inversión. Eh, yo quisiera concluir eh, llamando a que trabajemos en la complementariedad de nuestras economías para así poder tener una más profunda eh, y oportuna relación económica, comercial y de inversión entre los Emiratos Árabes y América Latina. Gracias, Ministro. Thank you to all of our speakers. It's been really insightful and interesting for me. I wish we had more time to talk, but, but we don't. So I'll just um, uh, ask the audience to join me in, in thanking our panelists, and hopefully this has set the stage for this deep dive into those sectors where we see potential.